Welcome to the Faith Alive Show. My name is Dan and I'll be your host today. We have an exciting program for you. First up is Pastor Brent continuing his series on the peace of God. Next is a Todd segment with Pastor Tyler Copeland in Meadow Lake, Saskatchewan. Followed by a powerful testimony on forgiveness. Next is a worship music video. And I'll be back with you at the end of the show. Whoever desires to love life and see good, ga good days, quoting Psalm 34 again, let him keep his tongue from what? Evil! And his lips from speaking deceit. Let him turn away from evil and do good. Let him seek peace and pursue it. See, now Peter is quoting it now, right? For the eyes of the Lord are on the what? Righteous. Who are those? Those are the people who seek peace and pursue it. Not everybody gets their prayers answers, answered. His ears are open to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. Well, we have to remember that, don't we? Say, pursue peace. Um, Romans 12, verse 17. Listen to this, you guys. This is the last thing. It says here, Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Say, do not. Instead, what are you supposed to do? When somebody does you wrong, what are you supposed to do? Just tell me. Who can tell me? Well, we talked about love before Christmas. Who can remember what love does? It says love doesn't even keep a record of a wrong suffered. In fact, love doesn't even know when it even gets wronged. That's real. That's the fullness of love. Real love is a person, someone could do something to you, you wouldn't even notice it. That's real love. How many of you are there yet? How many people do the opposite? They fuss and fight and tell everybody about the evil done to them. But it says, do not pay back evil for evil. And that's what most of us want to do. Instead, we're supposed to what? Extend grace to that person. Say, extend grace. But you can't extend grace when you ain't got no grace. Before you extend grace, you've got to go back and get some grace. That means you have to look at yourself and realize the grace that's been given you. And then, oh, when your eyes are open and your heart's been revealed, you can say, oh my gosh, Lord, you know what? Who am I to criticize another person? Who am I to attack another one of your servants, your children, who live and stand by you, and you can make them stand? Who am I to do that? You know what I'll do? I'll extend grace to them instead. I will forgive them. I will release that thing. I will let it go. Come on, isn't that right? I will not play the payback game. I will not tell everybody how bad you are to everyone else. I will not try and knock you down in the presence of someone else. I will not try to lift myself up at your expense. I will not try to attack you. I will try and build you up. Come on. These are all decisions we have to make on a daily basis. These are not things you can do. They're not just automatic. That's why you have to pursue peace. You have to work for it. You have to look after it. You have to look after this thing called peace. When you even think it's going to be taken away, you must fight to keep it. Because it can go very fast. Say very fast. Try to do what is honorable in everyone's eyes. Do the honorable thing, if possible. Love this scripture. Say, if possible. If possible. On your part, <laughs> live at peace with everyone. Man, I gotta like that scripture. Say, if possible. On your part. That means on your part, after you've gone and done everything you can do to try and make peace or promote peace, 
If it's possible and you can do it, then do it. Hello, I'm Pastor Tyler from uh, Meadow Lake Bridge Ministries, and I want to talk to you today about being a person of peace. In Romans 12, 18, Paul says, If possible, as far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And we think about that statement, Paul is, is saying that we need to be peacemakers all the time. In fact, the only time that we can't be a peacemaker is when it's beyond our control. So he's saying that we must make a conscious decision to be a peacemaker, to be someone who can bring peace or create peace or walk in peace. And at the beginning of the chapter, Paul gives us some attitudes that we need to adopt in order to be peacemakers in every situation. Some of us could really use this advice because some of us, you know, we, we live in frustration. We live uh, disturbed. We live sometimes even angry dealing with people. And Paul tells us how this works in the Christian life. First of all, he says that we are to give ourselves up for God as a sacrifice. And when he talks about this, he's painting a very stark picture. They would have known exactly what he was talking about. They would have visualized the altar, the animal, the sacrifice. He says, give yourself up as a sacrifice to God. And then secondly, he says that you're supposed to consider other people more important than yourself. It's pretty tough to be contentious and angry and frustrated with people when you actually care about how they're feeling more than you care about how you're feeling. So firstly, you have to be a person of peace, you have to give yourself up to God. And then secondly, you have to consider others more important than yourself. And Paul gives us a few hints on how this works because in theory it sounds good, but in reality it's pretty hard to be a person of peace. He tells us that even in his life, it was the grace of God that he could even talk this way. Because we know that Paul was not a person of peace. We know that he was a person of frustration and, and anger. And uh, the Bible even says that he was breathing out threats towards the early church. So he was, a, he was even a violent person. But somehow he became a man of peace. How did that happen? It happened by the work of the Holy Spirit in his life. So we need the Holy Spirit. We need that gift of God, that grace of God working in us to allow us to let go of frustration and anger and let go of those, those attitudes and embrace attitudes that cause peace to come into us and cause us to be people of peace. We need the Holy Spirit to work in us even today to become people of peace with all men as far as it is possible. At Faith Alive Bible College, we believe that everyone has the God-given destiny to live. Our passion is to prepare you with the tools, knowledge, and experience needed to succeed in every area of life and ministry. Our curriculum will challenge you to be transformed by God and empower you through immersion in His Holy Spirit. Study on campus, by correspondence, or online. Faith Alive Bible College. Your destiny starts here. I really love this. If possible, live at peace with everyone. You can't live at peace with everybody. There are some people that are just not going to reciprocate that. And that's okay. And you can have peace in that circumstance if you have done your part. Does that make any sense? If after you have gone and you have talked and you have apologized and you have humbled yourself and you have made it right and, they, and if they don't want it and they won't accept it, you know what? Then you can walk away and you can have the peace of God. And that's fine. And you can actually walk and be happy with yourself. You can't do anything about that person. They have to do that too, right? But if you haven't done that, and you can't walk around self-righteously saying, I'm okay. No, no. No, you've got to make it right. You have to pursue peace. And I don't know about you guys, but I want to have peace. It's an incredible force. It's an incredible force. In fact, you can have so much peace, Jesus said, that you could enter someone's house and bring your peace with them. And if they don't accept you, he said, if you go into a town and you bring your peace and they don't accept you, take your peace and leave. You don't give them a peace, you take your peace and leave. We actually have the power to give peace to people. You could speak peace in your family. You have the power to speak it in your family's lives, in your house over people. We've done it lots. People are agitated. They're crying. Peace. Peace is a force to be reckoned with. Jesus is the Prince of Peace. There's a lot of scriptures about peace. I'm not getting into them. 
There's so many. So you know what? If we will do what the Word says, this is key. If we will do what the Word of God says, not what your feelings say, not what your emotions say, not what your payback heart says, not what your carnal mind wants, not what revenge wants, not what anger wants, but what the Word of God says to do, then you can have that peace. And that's where it's very difficult. That's why we, it's something we have to do. It can be a far, powerful force. And you know what? The world is trying desperately to have peace. And here we've got it in our, at our very fingertips. And we are letting it go. Ugh. Jesus died so we could have peace. Before I was saved, I wanted that peace. Now I got that peace. Am I going to suddenly let it go now? Treat it frivolously or half-heartedly? Or... When there's people out there now doing all the craziest things in the world to try and find peace, and they can't find it. Some of them are committing suicide. You guys are hearing me, right? Some of them are in dire straits because they can't find the peace of God that we have. And here we are in the Christian world. We don't care about it. We bite and devour and consume each other and kill each other and hate each other and fight over everything and lose all the peace that Jesus died for us. And there's the world. They can't even taste a little lick of it. And we don't care. So you know what, guys? How many of you think it's time to start caring about the peace of God? And if you don't got it, maybe there's something you need to do. Amen? Man on the street. So think of a time that you were lied to, okay? How did you react to that? I was angry. I was sad. I just ignored it. Uh, I'd probably be angry, frustrated. Mad? <laughs> Mad? Okay. Um, she's standing right there. Uh, it's kind of awkward. We can, we can not look at her if you want. We, Let's we not look at her. Okay. I don't react too crazily in any way. Shocked, usually disappointed, sad. Yeah, annoyed. Not a full-out lash of, like, violence or anything. So what did you do or say the next time you saw that person? Probably nothing. Silent treatment. I was like, why'd you lie to me, bro? Um, ignored them. I would have had a more uh, skeptical attitude towards whatever they said next. Asked not to do it again? No, nothing really. Have you ever lied? Yes. Why? Uh, all the time, social convenience, uh, um, not to hurt somebody's feelings. Who hasn't? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, I have. Yeah. Yeah? Yes. No, never. <sighs> no. I don't lie. Well, just about silly things like if I eat the last cookie or something. Hey, well, that's important. <laughs> I would lie about that, too, if it was my cookie. Yeah, I have before. Have you ever lied to anyone sitting on this bench? No, I have not. <laughs> have you ever lied? Yeah. Yeah. To anybody sitting on this bench? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, that, that kind of backfired on me. I didn't, this, I feel awkward now. Okay. So what did you do or say to that person the next time you saw them? Uh, really tried not to talk to them at all because I knew I'd probably get really mad. Right. Um, well, it was my son, so I told him that I was quite disappointed in him. <laughs> Very curt. Okay, so how did you feel uh, the next time you saw that person that you lied to? Felt like cheating, kind of. Not very good. Mm, depending if it's a white lie, not too bad, I guess. Not very bad. Not great. I kind of felt guilty. Not great. What's the worst part about being lied to? Uh, and you feel really betrayed or usually like they think you're stupid. The feeling that you can't trust that person anymore. Man on the street. I think whenever we have trouble with people, we're going to have lose our peace. And then we can't just ignore it or, you know, we have to do make it right, don't we? Or at least as much as possible. And you, some people say, they use that scripture like, as much as possible, which, might, which means like, well, in me, it's just not possible. But I don't think that's what Jesus meant. I don't think that's what Paul meant. He didn't mean like, for some people it's possible, but for some of you rats, it's not. I don't think that's what he meant. Does that make any sense? I think he meant that 
The Holy Spirit is there to give us power to meet all those needs and more. And he's given us that power and we can do it. Amen. And it's not easy, but it is possible. And you can keep your peace, at least as far as it is between you and another person. And in our church, in this church, we want to make sure that we keep the peace. Amen. Because we want God's presence. We want his power. And listen, don't be deceived. If you won't forgive somebody, you have something against somebody, God will walk away. He doesn't totally leave us, but he does back off. He says, listen, I gave you my word to obey. And nobody, nobody gets away with disobeying it. Not even you. Not even the ones I died for. And in fact, I'd say this, especially not the ones he died for. Because he puts that responsibility on us because we have so much, don't we? We have his word, we have his spirit, we have his presence, we have his understanding. Jesus would never let us get away with it. He'd say, come on guys, let's make it right. Amen. So Father, I just pray for our church right now that we would make things right whenever we have to make it right. And Father, we would learn to keep ourselves, Lord, that we would not destroy the work of God because of our freedoms, Lord. And that, Father, that love is not a freedom to do whatever we want, but love is a freedom to harness ourselves, harness our carnal nature, harness our, our whatever we want to do, Lord, and do what you say to do, to do what the Word of God tells us to do. And, Father, we thank you for the peace of God that passes all man's understanding will come and guard our hearts and minds and direct us in Christ. And, Father, we thank you for that peace right now. Lord, I pray for peace in this church. Lord, I pray for peace in these people right now in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Lord. You are the Prince of Peace. So reach up right now, you guys. Pursue peace right now. Forgive somebody. Let, let somebody that's hurt you, let it go. Some instance, some circumstance, some trouble, some past issue, some person in the church you don't like, somebody's doing something you don't like. It's okay. Forgive them, release it, let it go. Say, let it go. Let it go. Let it go. Not your business. Let it go. Jesus can handle. Jesus can look after his own. Who are we to judge another man's servant? Another God or God's servant. Let it go. Say, let it go. I'm going to ask our prayer warriors to come down here. I think we should spend some time tonight just cultivating the presence of God. Can we do that? And I think that's important for us as a church to cultivate the presence of God and cultivate the power of God and cultivate the presence of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, come on. Let's ask Him to come right now. Be a church that wants God. Be a church that pursues God. Be the church that pursues after the things of God. Father, we do not want to be cold Father, we don't want to be cold-hearted. We don't want to be dispassionate. Father, we want to have passion for your presence, passion for the Word of God, passion for the things of God. Father, when the whole world, and even much of the church world, is, is cold and aloof, half-hearted or lukewarm, Lord, we are crying out for a church that has passion for you, a church that loves you, body, soul, and spirit, a church that's totally committed to you, 100%. A church that will die to themselves to do what's right. Father, so that we can experience your peace and continue to keep your peace in our lives and in our hearts and in our church, Lord. And Father, we believe this right now. In Jesus' mighty name, thank you, Holy Spirit. is glory I'm here to share my testimony how God has helped me to forgive I was born and raised up as a Muslim we attend a Quran session we learn how learn how to read the Quran but I was growing up as a teenager I met this Christian guy and I started dating him but I knew that my parents, they won't let me marry him because he was a Christian. 
Then uh, we find, we went around looking for my daddy's friend. So they went and sit down with him. And my dad said, no, I am Muslim. I have to marry Muslim. So we, after a while, my mother-in-law, she said that we are going to fast and pray and see who is the true God. After a while, my dad ended up saying yes, but he's not coming inside the church. Then we had our wedding and we moved to Zambia. We were in Zambia for a while and then my husband had the opportunity to come to Canada at Faith Alive Bible College. Then after nine months, I came to Canada too. I remember the first two weeks after I came, Dr. Pierce called me and said, you want to come to uh, Pastor Babu's class? She's teaching about forgiveness. I said yes. And she was talking about how many sweet curses we've carried in our lives and heaviness and all those things. So while she was talking, I was crying because that's the truth. That's why I was. I was a bitter person, sensitive. I had so many sweet cases in my life. And then at the end of class, she said, if anybody wants prayers, I just fell on the floor and started crying even more. How can I forgive? People really hurt me. The more I came to church, the more I get prayer, the more I listen, the more I pray, the more I come to church. It didn't happen in one year. It took me a while. It's not what people did to me. It's how I react over everything, and I was so sensitive. God was working on my heart. Finally, I forgive. Start forgiving one person at a time and I was a free person. Today I'm happy. I don't cry much anymore. Thank to God, I am free.
Make plans now to attend the Worship and Songwriting Conference July 10th to 12th at Faith Alive Family Church featuring Here Be Lions. Learn from Dustin Smith, integrity artist and songwriter, Jenny Riddle, author of Revelation Song, and Michael Farron of Pocketful of Rocks during three action-packed days of intense songwriting, breakout sessions, and worship services. Register online at fafc.ca and mark your calendars for the Worship and Songwriting Conference July 10th to 12th at Faith Alive Family Church. Have you ever asked Jesus to be the Lord of your life? Do you want to be set free of loneliness, depression, disease? If so, say this prayer with me and ask Him to come into your life. Repeat after me. Dear Jesus, come into my life. Rescue me of these chains that bind me. Wash me of all my sins and be the King over my life. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Wow, isn't it amazing how forgiveness can bring peace in your life? If you'd like to watch previous episodes, you can find them at faithalive.tv. Or if you'd like information, you can call us at 306-652-2230. And if you'd like information on our accredited Bible college, you can find that at fabc.ca. Right now, I would like to take the opportunity to pray with you. Father, I ask that you would help us to live at peace with you and the people in our lives. Help us to forgive people that we can please you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thanks for joining with us. We'll see you next week.